So there we go. That's the beginnings of what I'm looking for are big wads of bluegills. Um, there's some scattered there. I'm looking for a big wad of them. We're kind of post-spawn. I'd say all the fish are done spawning. The bluegills are even done spawning and they've pulled out on it. What I'm doing is getting off of the, the grass, the edge of the grass, the deep edge, which is in anywhere from eight to 10 feet. And the bluegills will kind of sit up in the water column. Sometimes you'll see them on the surface. Sometimes you'll be able to graph them. And when you can find a big concentration of bluegills, that's where you're gonna find a lot of big bass. You know, a couple weeks ago, those big bass were sitting near those bluegill beds, darting out, grabbing a bluegill when they wanted to but they're basically following the bluegills out a little bit deeper. I'm gonna start with the Tokyo rig. It's a cool new presentation that presents a plastic in a way that the bass have not seen before. And from previous experience, it works really well. So I'm gonna start with that, but this is a situation where I'm not gonna throw a horizontal bait, a real like a search bait, like a crank bait or a swim bait. I'm gonna do that in situations when I don't have a concentration where I'm pretty sure the fish are gonna be right here when they could be more spread out. That's when I'm gonna use a horizontal bait. But for now, I'm gonna start with a vertical presentation and go from there. Got him. Oh, there he is. Oh yeah. Oh, oh wow. Oh, that's a nice one. Holy smokes. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that one, man. There is a tank on the Tokyo rig, cool. You gotta figure there's bass around a massive school of bluegills like that. And sure enough, One thing with this Tokyo rig, it's just a traditional Texas rig on a wide gap hook, but you wanna make sure you leave enough room. You don't wanna jam your plastic way up there on that bend because you don't wanna jam it up. You want this freedom of movement. That's a really big key with the Tokyo rig is complete freedom of movement. That added movement gets you more bites. There's no questions asked and making sure your plastic isn't jammed up there is a real important tip when you're fishing this Tokyo rig. So while I'm fishing, I'm kind of keeping an eye on my graph up here and I can see when I get around bluegills, there's one, there's a fish. The fish are really keyed in on those bluegills. Look at that, oh, this is fun. Cool, another nice fish. I think there's a whole pile of them in here. A Tokyo rig, man, this is a killer rig. It's, it's providing an action with a, a bait, you know, your favorite plastic bait. I don't know that it makes all that much difference, but it's a whole different presentation the fish have not seen. It's almost a hybrid between a Texas rig and a drop shot but it's for power fishing, catching big fish on you know, heavy line. This is a 17 pound suffix advance. It's a cool new mono that has super low stretch and a lot of abrasion resistance, which is perfect for this. You know, there's wood, a lot of different grass, things that are rubbing on your line, but this is a good setup and it's working. There he is. Oh man, that's another good one. Holy smokes. Get him in here, yeah. Oh, that is a lot of fun. Boy, just wailing on him. Find a big school of bluegills, find a bunch of nice bass. That's kind of how it goes, summertime bassing. You know, one cool thing with this Tokyo rig is when you're around a piece of cover, like a dock or wood, or, or you're, you think you're around fish, this is a great bait that you can shake because you got the weight on the bottom. And as you shake, your bait's just flapping up there a couple inches above the bottom, and it'll drive them totally crazy. You get a lot of bites just shaking it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh 
Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, he's fired up. Holy smokes. Wow. This rig really pegs him. The roof of the mouth. Another beauty. Mowing down on bluegills. There's one. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, it's a big fish. Oh, oh. golly. <laughs> That's so cool. Man, once again, just moving along, look down, see bluegills on the graph, you get a bite. <laughs> they are super dialed in on bluegills. What a fun way to catch them. Nice, big, healthy bass. Man. I don't know, I've made a few casts around in here where the bluegills were. I haven't got a bite, so... I don't think they've gone far, but they've shifted, and the bass are following these bluegills. They're fairly nomadic, so... I don't see much cover that they're hanging on, so I'm just gonna kind of move around, and hopefully I go the right way. Uh, if I don't run into them right over here, I'm just gonna turn around and go back that way. They're likely around, but they seem pretty aggressive once I get around them. One really cool thing with these electronics is they're, they all talk to each other, so they're networked in with a hub. And when I do see all that bait or I see a piece of structure, really anything I, I wanna take notice of, all I have to do is mark a waypoint on it. So right there, mark. Got my waypoint that's gonna pop up in the front and I can circle around it, stay off it, and fish very efficiently. I know that I'm, my bait is around that waypoint, which is where those bluegills are. Granted, they're, they're bluegills, they got tails, they're gonna swim around, but, but for the time being, they're right there, and as they move, I'll stay on them with my electronics. Suspended bait fish with 2D. I always wanna have 2D going on my front, and as well as the 360. The 360 is almost like cheating when it comes to following suspending bait fish. Bluegill, shad, you name it. They stick out like a sore thumb and you can see which direction they're going and you can really stay oriented and stay on the fish. It's really neat. You can feel so well with this with this Tokyo rig because you've got tungsten on the very bottom contacting the structure and it's, it's amazing how you can feel a piece of wood, a little bit of hard structure. And when you do feel that hard structure, that's a great spot to just take a second and just kind of shake your rod. That bait's going to flop around. It's got so much, that freedom of movement's a big deal. And it looks very realistic. And that's, that's when you're going to get a lot of your bites. There he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, <laughs> oh, he just jumped about three feet out of the water. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. Oh, this is a chunk. Wow, look at that one. Boy, that is what you're looking for. A big northern largemouth. Very cool. It's just one of those things, day in and day out, if you can find the bait, whether it's shad or perch or whatever, but bluegills, bass love bluegills, all around the country, especially in the Midwest, Finding a big raft of bluegills like we did. Slowing down, throwing a Tokyo rig through it. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs>